Just past midnight here, back home, great two days. Hey everybody, so I'm here in Washington DC and I'm working with a client that I had previously worked with last November and they are moving into their new offices and so they have asked me to come in for two days here and just talk to them about some kind of higher level themes around change and really gather feedback, some of the initial reactions from their teams and from their staff on what they think of the new place, what are some concerns, some obstacles they see, what are they really excited about. And so my role really today is to gather up all that information and kind of put it all together Together, find the overarching themes and then also talk to them a bit towards the end of my 90 minutes I have with each group about reality-based leadership go back over some of the basic concepts it's something different than I usually do and I'm helping um, move them from where they were to where they're going now and so two days with them I'm gonna get a lot of great insights for the board to make decisions moving forward and really just gonna touch base again on the concepts of reality-based leadership Surprise, panic, and blame. Surprise, oh, this thing realized it was coming this fast. I didn't realize how different it was going to be. Panic, am I going to be competent enough? Am I going to know how to use this stuff? Is it going to like show that I'm not ready? Blame, lack of leadership, lack of training, lack of um, you know foresight. Somebody we go through this fault. cycle, somebody else's fault, all right? So we see this in ourselves. Once we get through that, which sometimes can be really fast, sometimes a little slower for people, we fall into resistance. No matter what change happens in our lives, we go into resistance. Some stay there. Others get through resistance. They move into what we call maintenance, where they're just going to like wait and see. They're going to survive this thing. They're over it, but they're going to just um, kind of get through it. A few people in an organization, we're looking at an organization, jump right into vision, where they see the opportunity and all the new resources. They see where the teams can collaborate. They don't think about what we don't have. They're really thinking about what they do have. And so we kind of see this play out. Now in the typical organization, about 20% end up here, people find their favorite camps, we say. 60% end up here, and you guys might remember this, just a good reminder, 20% end up here. Now, when we're thinking about the, the whole change, where's a lot of energy go when it comes to change? What group usually gets the most energy? Resistance. Isn't it true? So that takes too much energy. Yeah, because we're trying to, we're trying to buy them in and we're trying to get them on board and we're like, no, it's going to be okay. And you're spending, yeah. if you're a leader, our research shows you're spending an extra like 80 hours a year on someone that's in a chronic state of resistance. And we find that there's only about like a one to 2% chance of ever getting that person out of resistance. And we often say it'll take like, they'll have to rewrite their whole life story to be out of this mindset. Like, you know, why they didn't finish college right away. Like you'll have to like rewrite the whole story. But what's funny is if we spend a ton of time here with no return on the investment, they probably won't budge. Guess what maintenance does? Stay status quo, or they like to go where the love is. Oh. They like to go where the love is. Oh. And so when we're going through change, and I want you guys thinking about this, where you're, where you're settling, and then also as it's going on, are we putting a lot of energy towards these people? Because this is what we see over and over is that they go where the love is. And then if we're looking at how's this change going in the next year or two years, is the energy going towards here that we'll have a culture that kind of shifts towards resistance of these new opportunities? A big piece of advice for leaders, we always say, is you gotta work with the willing. Because the willing are your believers. If you're a reality based leader, you play favorites and you say, heck yes, I do. Would you like to be one? And so what we say is work with this willing group. If we put a lot of energy here, where did the visionaries go? They're, they've been ready since the start. They're sitting there waiting. We see them transition out of the organization to go to a place that will reward visionary, high accountable behavior. And that's where we see like our visionaries going to our competition. Alrighty, all done for the day. Headed back to the airport. Fascinating two days, really helping this uh, group kind of be reminded of you know, how we really react when we're going through change, especially when they're going through a 
a change that's as kind of important as a move into a whole new facility. And it was awesome to touch again on the philosophy because even after they've heard it, this would be their third time now, they still had some head nods and some new kind of realizations as I went through the content. And so I love seeing that, uh, but we're headed back. Can't wait to be home. Just past midnight here, great two days. Overall, I think the group looked really excited about their new space. We talked a bit about the ego and how when it comes to change, that change is very disruptive to the ego and it always wants to narrate and jump in when the reality is, let's say we're moving to a new space, but the ego wants to jump in and add its commentary, which is, and it's gonna be a disaster. It's gonna take a long time to adjust and, and nothing's ever gonna be really clear for a while and, it, and it's gonna really disrupt my work. See, the reality is there's a new space we're moving into. You can keep chipping away at that. There's a building, there's a location we're moving into. We'll just be watching during change that ego does not want to be disruptive. It doesn't like kind of getting shook up. So it's going to jump in with these stories about what's going to happen with the new space and, and how it's going to mess up your workflow and how it's going to be so different. And, and why couldn't it just be the other way? And that ego is going to tell that story. It's going to be narrating the world. It's going to look for insult where there isn't any. It's going to try and bend what's happening and really distort it and put it back in your favor that you're kind of the victim of this, this circumstance here. And I didn't see that initially going on with the client, but I just know that the ego does come out to play in a change. And we just need to constantly ask ourselves, is it true? Is that ego story even true? And most of the times it's not. I love being a part of that group. I was there in November and got to see the plans. And then throughout the two days, we saw the furniture being delivered. We saw the signs going up. And so I really got to experience this with them and then also remind them of the philosophy. And so again, it's 1220. Appreciate your time, you guys. Thank you for checking out the vlog. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, if there's any comments you have from what was presented, let me know. Um, leave them below. Please subscribe to this channel if you're liking you know, these traveling vlogs, if you're liking some of the insights. Please share it with others. As always, let's keep ditching the drama. You